Hi, this is Steve at Universal Devices with a tutorial on the basic configuration of your ISY. I'm going to go over the basic system configuration of your ISY, such as how to configure the network, clock, email notifications, how to perform firmware upgrades, and how to back up and restore your ISY. So you just took your ISY out of the box and got it connected to your home network. Now what? To access your ISY for the first time, go to http colon slash slash www.universaldevices.com slash 99i. What this is going to do is load a Java applet that will locate your ISY in your network. This method is usually the best method to access your ISY as its IP address may change. By default, the username and password is admin and admin. To access the ISY later, you can either repeat the process we just used to access the ISY, or you can obtain the actual IP address of the ISY. To do that, go to help and then about. As you can see, the my URL is the actual IP address of the ISY. You can use that later to access the ISY's web interface. To access the web interface of your ISY, we can use the IP address we just found. Simply open your browser and go to http colon slash slash the IP address you just located under the my URL. In my case, it was 192.168.0.5. This will open up the web interface of the ISY. By default, the username and password is admin admin. Once we are logged in, you will see the dashboard page of your ISY. Clicking on the My Devices and Scenes link on the page will allow you to control the devices and scenes on your network. As you can see, I have one device called Table Lamp and its status is currently off. I can click the On button if I wanted to turn it on and the Off button if I wanted to turn it off. You can also get the status of any modules that you may have purchased for your ISY. By default, your ISY will obtain an IP address from your home router. For most people, the DHCP address will suffice, but in some cases you may find it beneficial to give the ISY a static IP address so it's not a moving target on your network. This comes in handy when you want to do port forwarding in your router or have third-party apps that you want to use to connect to your ISY. But in my case, I want to set a static IP address on the ISY so I can do some port forwarding in my router. So to do that, we're going to open the admin console. This opens a little Java applet that you can use to configure your ISY. By default, the username and password is admin and admin. As you can see, this is the administrative portal for the ISY, and to change its configuration, I'm going to click on the Configuration tab. This Network Settings box is the box that we're going to use to set the IP address on the ISY. To do that, we're going to simply uncheck Automatic DHCP and type in the IP address that we want to use on our network. This will vary based on your network, but in most cases it's going to start with 192.168. Once you're done entering the IP address information, click Save and it's going to cause the ISY to reboot. So my ISY has rebooted and I went right back into the admin console. As you can see, the IP address was changed to 192.168.0.5, and I accessed the admin console through that IP address in my browser. The next thing I wanted to show you how to configure in the ISY is the clock. Having the correct time set in the ISY is important because it is used by the ISY for various functions, such as to kick off programs at certain times. It is also used when it writes its logs. By default, the ISY is set to use network time protocol to keep the clock synchronized with the time server on the internet. You should also choose a location to make sure that the ISY is able to calculate sunset and sunrise times for your location. If your location is not on the list, you can click the Locate Me button to find the nearest location to you. You also have the option to synchronize the clock with the computer's time or to manually adjust the clock. So now that I've shown you the basics on configuring your ISY, I'd like to show you how to configure and use email notifications. Email notifications are useful for many different things around your home. For example, you can use them to send you an email if you forgot to close your garage door or if someone came into your home after a certain time. In order to configure them, you will need to know some information about the email servers at your ISP. Many ISPs will not allow you to use an email server other than their own, so it may be best to use their servers. You can obtain that SMTP information from your ISP. Once you have the SMTP server settings handy from your ISP, we can configure the ISY to use them. In order to do that, we're going to go to the Emails and Notifications tab in the Admin Console. 
In the SMTP settings box at the top of the page, you're going to enter the information provided by your ISP. If you use Gmail, the, the SMTP server would be smtp.gmail.com. The SMTP port needs to change to 587, and the use TLS checkbox needs to be checked. Your user ID is the same as your email address. If you want to have a friendly format for the from field, you can do something like first, last name, colon, email address. And then we're going to click the Save button. So now that we've got the SMTP settings configured, we have to create a recipient to send to. To do that, simply double click on Select to Edit Content, and you can add a regular email address. In this box, you can add multiple email addresses for multiple recipients if you'd like. You can also add multiple groups for your convenience. So say that you want to send an email out when you forget to close your garage door when you leave. To do that, you're going to click on the Customizations tab under all Emails and Notifications. To add a notification, click the Add button at the bottom of the screen and give the notification a name. We'll call this one Garage Door Notification. To customize the content, click Select to Edit Email Content. And we'll give the email a subject. We'll call this Garage Door Left Open. And then maybe we'll put the date as a variable. In the body of the email, we can also say garage door left open. We'll put the date and then maybe the time. Let's try this again. Click OK and then save. We now have a notification set up. So now you might be wondering, how do you actually send an email from a program? To do that, we're going to go to the Programs tab. This is where all of the programs are available on your ISY. I don't have any programs currently except for the default Query All program that runs every night to figure out the status of the system. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new program. And we're going to call this Garage Door. Now with the Garage Door program here, we can simply add our conditions. And then as you can see, Notify is an option in default is who we're sending it to and then as you can see our garage door notification is available here we can add it to then simply add the different conditions that you want in your program and then hit save changes that program is now able to email you periodically universal devices releases new firmware for the ISY that not only contain bug fixes but also adds new functionality to your ISY there are two methods we can use to upgrade the ISY the first method I'm going to show you is the automatic method. First thing we want to do is check to see what version of firmware the ISY is currently running. To do that, we're going to go to Help and then About. As you can see, this ISY is currently running version 2.8.16. At the time of this tutorial, the current version is 3.1.17. So what we're going to do to upgrade is simply go to Help and then automatically upgrade my lighting. We're going to go ahead and say yes, and then also OK. And we do recommend that you take a backup of your ISY in the unlikely event that something may happen to your configuration, you'll actually have a backup. What the ISY is doing right now is going out to the internet and grabbing the latest firmware from the Universal Devices servers and installing it. After this process is done, the ISY is going to reboot and you'll be running the latest firmware. Okay, so the firmware finished installing and my ISY rebooted. I went ahead and logged right back into the admin console, so this time let's go ahead and check to see what version of firmware the ISY is running. As you can see, we're now running the latest and greatest, 3.1.17. Okay, now that I've shown you the automatic upgrade process, I'm going to show you the manual method. This method is used when you want to run a firmware release that is different from the latest available automatically. 
You would also use this method if you want to try out a beta release. The first step is to go to the Universal Devices forum and download the firmware. As you can see on the forum homepage under the announcements section, there is a current release, betas, and bug reports section. The latest and greatest firmware is right here, but you can actually grab any of these here as well. So I'm going to download the latest official version. And since I'm using an, an, an ISY99i, I'm going to download this version right here. And I'm going to save it as. Put it right on my desktop. Now one of the things to keep in mind is you are downloading a zip file, but you do not want to extract it because the ISY will take the zip file directly. So I'm going to go right into my admin console right here. And I'm going to go to help and then manually upgrade my lighting. And again, I'm going to click OK. And again, we do want to recommend that you take a backup. So now I'm going to browse on my desktop to where I saved the official firmware. I'm going to click OK. And right now, the firmware is actually being installed. Same process as the, the automatic method, but the ISY is going to reboot, and I can connect again to the admin console. So once again my ISY has rebooted and I logged back into the administrative console. I'm going to again check to see what version of firmware the ISY is now running. So we're going to go to help and then about. And as you can see the ISY is running version 3.1.17. However this time I actually installed that manually. So the last part of this tutorial is backing up and restoring your ISY. You want to periodically take a backup of your ISY in the unlikely event that something happens to your configuration, you'll have a backup copy to restore. That is a simple, to back it up, it's as simple as going to File, Backup ISY, and browsing to a place to put it. And that's it, I just backed up my ISY. To show you how to restore your ISY from a backup, I'm going to go ahead and delete this lamp link dimmer I have. Now that that's deleted, you'll see the difference. So we're going to go to File, Restore ISY. What this is basically telling us is that the ISY is going to reboot when we're done. So we're going to go ahead and say yes. And again, you might have a firewall that will block this, but make sure it's disabled. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. And then we're going to scroll down to the backup that we took today. Click Open. And what's happening right now is the ISY is being restored from the backup. Once this process is done, the ISY will reboot and our table lamp object that we had deleted should be back. Okay, so my ISY has finished restoring its backup and now the ISY has rebooted and I logged back into the admin console. As you can see, the table lamp that we deleted earlier is back. The ISY has finished its restore process and is back to normal. So that's it. Hopefully this video tutorial on configuring your ISY was helpful to you. Please be sure to check out our other video tutorials on this website.